left my glasses on. <laughs> Welcome to our Christmas in July video chat. I'm Sarah Satch with Posh Pooch Designs, and today we're doing our Christmas in July kickoff. During the month of July, and then at least the next two weeks, we're going to be doing some fun Christmas patterns. We've got some new ones that we're going to be uh, making videos and new uh, video blogs um, and patterns for and then we also have some of our older patterns that I've done the last couple years So what I did is I asked some of my people who love my patterns to let me know which patterns are their favorites And which ones they'd like me to do videos for and I'll be sharing those with you in a, in a few minutes but the first thing we want to talk about today is Where did Christmas in July come from? Well, are you feeling a little bit cheery today? Merry Christmas in July. <laughs> Have you got your coffee? I decided I've got my, my, one of my Christmas shirts on. I've got a little Christmas headband on. And I've got my Christmas cup filled with cold coffee because it's July. My goodness, we don't want to have Christmas in July and have hot coffee, do we? <laughs> well, I actually still drink hot coffee every morning, but I thought it would be fun to put my cold coffee in my Christmas mug so it looks like cocoa. Well, anyway, where did Christmas in July come from? Well, I did a lot of investigating and I discovered that there's several different ideas. One of them was a camp many years ago, wanted to have a Christmas celebration in the middle of summer, so they just called it Christmas in July, like back in the 30s, 1930s. Another thought was that, um, good morning, Michelle. For some reason, the side of my screen where everybody posts is sideways. So I'm ha I can't really see unless I turn my head to see who's here today. But anyway, I'll be watching. <laughs> Do I look sideways to you? Because I don't know why it's sideways. Um, and I don't know how to fix it. Good morning, Tanya. I, I, I'm looking straight in my camera and I'm straight up and down, but I noticed that the words on the side are sideways. And I don't know how to fix that. So, <laughs> I suppose I could try to turn my camera. I wonder if that would work, but I don't I don't want to try right now because I'm afraid I'll mess things up. It's very, very windy here today. Here in, we're in Parker, Colorado. We have a lot of fires going on around the uh, Denver area and in Colorado right now, and it's very, very windy. So it's really noisy even coming through my big window. It's really windy. So I don't really don't want to uh, mess with anything because our connection keeps popping off and on. So I may pop in and out. So I'm having a little trouble with my connection this morning. Anyway, it's Christmas in July. Well, let's talk about that some more. We talked about how um, someone decided to have Christmas in, at a camp many years ago in the 30s. I also heard that it was a big deal before air flight where they couldn't air mail everything. They had to ship it over. And so if you had family or missionaries or friends that lived overseas, you had to get your Christmas packages out by the middle of July if they were going to get them by Christmas. And that's another thought that that's where the Christmas in July came from. Another thing I read was that um, a lot of re retailers uh, invented the Christmas in July event in order to get rid of their last year's Christmas stuff, uh, merchandise, to get rid of it because they knew they were going to be, you know, back then they didn't set up till like September. And this was back in the 50s and 60s from what I read. And they would try to get rid of all their Christmas stuff so that they could set up their new stuff. Well, you know, nowadays we have humongous Christmas sales, you know, uh, right after Christmas. So there really isn't much left probably. Um, that's why I love Hobby Lobby because they understand that they're a craft store. 
And us crafters need our stuff in July and August in order to be ready for Christmas. So that's one thing I really love about Hobby Lobby. They get all their craft Christmas stuff out really early. So anyway, let's see, there was one other thing. Oh, I know what it was. Us crafters like our stuff early, <laughs> like I said. But anyway, I really don't know. I read lots of fun things, and I really don't know where Christmas in July came from. So we're having our Christmas in July. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. <laughs> or maybe we should sing, Grandma Got Ran Over by a Reindeer. <laughs> Hmm, that probably wouldn't be a very pretty sight. <laughs> anyway, today I'm going to show you lots of fun things that we're doing. Now, last week we did we released a couple of new patterns, and one of them was this Happy Scrubby. And this is also a video on YouTube. It's really fun to make with the Red Heart Scrubby yarn. And look how sparkly that is. This is the Red Heart um, Sparkle Scrubby. And you do two circles and put them together. Really easy pattern. Another one I had a request for were these rag dolls, but they wanted the Chihuahua rag doll. So I decided to do them in the colors of my logo. And so I made two. And this is not a video yet. This is one we're going to do in the future. But I did go ahead and put the pattern out there for free on my blog. So you can find these. They're really fun and easy to make. These make great Christmas gifts, too. So I'm going to throw those over there. All right. So. What are we doing this week or this month for Christmas in July? Well, the next two weeks, we're going to be doing um, um, several patterns, like I said, that are, are older ones that, um, that people, I, what I did is I asked people who use my patterns a lot to tell me which ones were their favorites and which ones they really wanted to see a video on. And the number one pattern, <laughs> this cracks me up like crazy, the number one pattern was this. <laughs> And what is this, you ask? <laughs> Anybody know? Anyone want to venture a guess? Basically, what this is, is, <clears throat> let me tell you the story. My grandkids were visiting at Christmas, and you know I have two chihuahuas. Those of you who follow me know I have two chihuahuas, Maximo and Rosie. And we had to pick up the dog poop in the front yard. <laughs> What a great idea, Tracy. That is an excellent idea. I also thought maybe to make those, she said to, to make them into water bottle covers. That's an excellent idea. I think they'd work great as backpacks too. It'd be really easy just to add straps on and just leave the top open, maybe put a zipper or a flap or something. Anyway, while my grandkids were visiting and we had to pick up dog poo in the front yard, well, I gave them each a bag to put over their hand and then I gave them another bag and we played this game, who could pick up the most dog poop? Well, they thought it was just hilarious. And so my son-in-law said, you ought to make a Christmas ornament out of that because it was at Christmas time. We're tromping around in the snow, picking up dog poo. <laughs> it was really funny. And that's what this is. This is just a fun gag gift. And the neat thing about these is um, when I first put them out there, I got a lot of bad and negative um, comments. And that's okay. I don't mind. I, I can let the, that stuff roll off me. But I got a lot of positive comments from dog rescues and, and people wanted them for gag gigs, of course. And I made a whole bunch of them and I was selling them like uh, three of them for 20 bucks. I mean, it was really cheap. And um, a bunch of the dog rescues contacted me. And so I made a bunch for them to give um, out for their um, raffles and stuff like that. They would auction them off. And people loved them because they're funny. And if you have a dog that you have to clean up dog poo after, it's a great gag gift. Even if you have a cat that you have to clean that litter box, they're a great gag gift. Okay, so that video, video actually, I edited it this morning, and it's on YouTube. Now, the other things that were asked for was this right here. And this is my um, Christmas sweater coffee cup cozy. And this one is also going to be a video. That was the, what, the second one on the list that was asked for. And this is really versatile because you can just make it as big as you want for any size cup. And this is a great get Christmas gift. I gave these to my friends in my crochet group. And I filled them with candy. Made a neat little bag. And they just loved them. And another thing, if you're having an ugly sweater party, which we almost always do every year we have an ugly sweater party, you can make these kind of crazy and silly, put some funny buttons on them. Great gifts and great um, giveaways for like game prizes. Okay, another thing that we're going to do is 
This was the number three on the list was, this is a dog bandana or a cat bandana. And it was number three on the list, the Santa bandana for dogs and cats. I believe it has three sizes listed on the pattern. And all of these that I'm showing you today are already patterns on the blog. So you can go and find them on my blog. They're free. They're on Ravelry. You can find them on there too. But these are the ones we're going to be doing videos of in the next couple weeks. The other one that was on the list, let's see, one, two, three, four. This is the fourth one. And this is what I call the Christmas sweater ornament. And they're really fun to make. And you take a big paper clip and make a little hanger for them. So, and then you can use your regular hanger and hang them up. I made these in crazy colors for our Christmas sweater party two years ago. And they were a big hit. And you can make it in a solid or you can make it in a stripe. Or however you want to. Use a variegated yarn. They work up really great. And you can also, these are made with worsted weight, but you can also use, um, a sport weight and it makes it a lot smaller. Just follow the pattern exactly. Go down a couple hook sizes that the sport weight calls for on the yarn. Make them a little bit smaller and they're a lot of fun. So we're going to be doing a video on these to show you how to do these and they're easy, super easy. They make great gifts also. One thing I like to do when people come visit my house at Christmas time, I like to send them home with a homemade gift. And so I make up a bunch of these kinds of things and let them pick something. And it's a lot of fun to know someone took something home that you made. All right, that's number four. Number five on the list was this Santa coaster. And this is a really neat little coaster. It has an edge right here so that when you set your cocoa or your coffee right here, it kind of helps it keep from sliding off the coaster. So, and it's a really fun, and you can also use it as a Christmas ornament. Just hook your little Christmas tie in there or put a piece of sparkly yarn in there and hang it up like we did with the poop, with the poop ornaments. <laughs> I can't even say poop without, without laughing about those ornaments. Anyway, this is our Santa. He's really cute. He is a coaster and a Christmas ornament. And then, let's see, the sixth one was these small little mittens. And they're really cute. You just make a little mitten and they're for hanging on your Christmas tree. But they do have a little hole in here because they are an actual mitten, except the thumb is just a thumb bump. And what you can do, um, these fit really nice over Tootsie Roll Pops. You can slide one inside. Or you can fill them with different candy and give them out as little gifts. When, like if you have a family that comes over and they have children and you want to send them home with a Christmas gift, put some little candy in there that kids like, like Dum Dum Suckers, my granddaughter loves those, and or chocolates, chocolate kisses, and send them home with one of these. They can eat the candy and then they can hang that on their Christmas tree at home. So, so these are the six different patterns that we're going to have in the next two to three weeks that we're going to make videos for. Now, the last couple things I want to talk to you about uh, <clears throat> my voice is getting dry. Let me grab some cold coffee real quick. And don't forget, if you're drinking coffee or tea, always use a straw. It'll keep your teeth whiter. My dentist told me that. <laughs> okay, the last couple things I'm going to talk to you about is we have some new patterns coming out, but I'm not going to tell you anything other than it's all about gingerbread. <laughs> I'm going to try to have a free pattern for the next three weeks. And then I also have a couple of um, dog sweater and dog hat patterns that are going to be coming out for Christmas in July. And they'll be at a reduced price to begin with. And then after July, they'll go to regular price. But um, if you like the gingerbread stuff, oh, I've, I've really come up with some really cute things. Once my brain starts thinking a direction, it's like I can't turn it off. And so I thought, well, I'm going to see what I can find. The best way to search for something fun to, to uh, design at Christmas time or any time is to look at children's color books. <laughs> because they have such great basic designs. And I really try to stay away from anything that is a licensed thing anymore. When I first started creating designs, I didn't know that about the copyright laws of like say Minions or Mickey Mouse or any of those things. And I really didn't know how those things worked. And I realized after I started investigating and talking to some friends and, and um, friends that had trouble with lawyers and people trying to sue them because I don't want that to happen to me, I stopped making anything and I deleted all my patterns that were Mickey Mouse, you know, Disney, Minions, those kinds of things because I didn't really, I did, just didn't want to get in trouble because I love what I do too much to hurt my business. So if you're looking for those kind of things, you know, I know I'm sideways, Elizabeth. I don't know how to fix that. What, there's an arrow up there, but when I, when I hit the button, it went backwards and forwards. And I have no idea why I'm sideways. 
Um, I, I, I wanted to try to turn my screen that maybe that would help. Um, but I'm having trouble with my connection because it's, we've, it's really, really windy and we have six different fires burning. So if I, um, open my window, the smoke comes in and, and, but it's really, really windy. So if, uh, the, the internet keeps popping in and out, we have, a, we have so much smoke cover right now. So I don't know why I'm sideways. I've always been a little cockeyed. So <laughs> I could give it a try. Let's see if it'll work. And if I if I go away, have a Merry Christmas in July. <laughs> Let's try this. Am I straight now? Tell me if I'm straight now. Can you see me straight? Am I up and down? Excellent. Oh, I remember that. I don't know why it was sideways like that. I've done it that way forever. And um, I, I did notice when I went in to start the video that um, the, the icon now is in color. I think it was like bright blue or something. I can't remember. So do you need to see everything again going up and down? I can show it to you again. Number one pattern everybody requested was the dog poop pattern. <laughs> I can't say that without laughing. It just cracks me up. Everybody loves them. The number, the number two most requested Christmas pattern for July was the Christmas sweater coffee cup or cocoa cup cozy. Let's see. One, two, three. The third one was the dog Santa bandana. You can make this in green too. And if you would prefer knit, I have this one in a knit version also. It's also a free pattern on my blog. One, two, three, four. The fourth one was the ugly sweater Christmas ornaments or the cutie, cutie sweater orna, uh, Christmas sweater ornaments. I think I got that out of order. I think Santa came before that, but that's okay. Yeah, the bandana is fun. And those are, I, I try to make everything as if I can for Christmas out of sparkly yarn because I just love Red Heart has a great sparkle yarn. I love this yarn has a great sparkle yarn. I'm trying to think. I ordered one from Yarnspirations one time, but I didn't care for the, the thread that was going through because it, it broke really easy. But anyway, this is our Santa coaster. You, it has the edge that you can put your coffee cup on that keeps it from sliding out, or you can use it for a Christmas ornament. These look really nice to pin on stockings, too, now that I think about it. But that one's going to be... And then the last one was our little mittens that you can put goodies inside to give away. Our little miniature Christmas ornament mittens. Now, these six items are the items that are going to be on videos this week. And remember, I already put the dog poop one on there. <laughs> see, I can't say dog poop without laughing. I don't know why. <laughs> it's because it's so silly. It really is silly, but it has been like my number one Christmas pattern. It really has. Like I said, the dog rescues love it, and it's great. It's been great for gag gifts, and it's just been a fun pattern. And I've made so many of them now, I can't even count. So, <laughs> anyway, these six patterns are the I'm trying going to try to do two videos a week for Christmas in July for these existing patterns, and then I'm going to try to have on Friday. I'm going to have a freebie Friday special edition Christmas pattern that's going to have a gingerbread theme. I'm going to try to do that the next three Fridays. And then I have a new dog sweater and hat um, for Christmas coming out that I'll have that also. Now, also, if you go to my Etsy shop, I have three, uh, I think it's three, maybe four. I can't remember now. But I have four Christmas that you can buy one sweater and get the second one free bundles. For instance, if you buy the Christmas sweater, there's a Christmas hoodie that you get for free. Um, the other one, I think, is I have totally forgotten. But there's also the hoods that I make, the um, snoods, snoods, however you say them, for dogs. I've got to buy one, get one free on that, and a couple others. you know. But the best way to find those is just to go to my Etsy shop, go to the categories on the side, and put in um, look for crochet pattern bundles. And um, remember... I sell bent patterns and I sell items. Go If you're wanting the pattern, go to the pattern. If you want the item, those are on the side too. There's categories on the side. So 
Anyway, I'm so glad we, that that worked. I was afraid to do anything, like I said, because our internet is really iffy today. And there's so much smoke in the air from all these fires. If you think about it, say a prayer for our firefighters here because they're, they're um, fighting, fighting, fighting. Some of these are having to just let burn and because there's just nothing that they can do. And, you know, our one of our great firefighters here lost his own home to this fire that was started by these two gentlemen that just didn't put their fire out while they were camping. So if you come to Colorado and you can't, make sure you put your fire out, number one, and don't put a buffalo in your car. <laughs> I tell you what, don't touch the wildlife. It's the funniest thing. If you see a deer by itself, it's not lost. It's mama's going to eat something. If you see a buffalo by itself, more than likely it's not lost. The mama's gone to eat breakfast, you know. Mama's get hungry. <laughs> okay? So, put your fires out and don't put a buffalo in your car. <laughs> I, I know that's not funny and it was really sad that they had to euthanize that, that buffalo, but... Okay, and the last thing I want to say, because I need to kick off or this is going to be too long now that I've figured out that I, how to not be upside down or sideways. Maybe I should turn it upside down. <laughs> Cock off my head. Anyway... <laughs> The last thing I want to say is please remember to be crafty, my friend. <laughs> I remembered it and then I totally forgot what I was going to say. That's my new saying. Stay crafty, my friends. <laughs> oh, and if you want this headband, this is just the slanted headband all in red. And then I made this little wreath and just uh, pinned it on. Because I wanted to be a little bit corny today. And if you like my t-shirt, I thought it looked kind of like knit. Let me tell you a little secret. <laughs> it's not mine. It's my husband's. <laughs> I bought it for him and he was like, really? I am not wearing that shirt. <laughs> I said, fine. I'll take it. <laughs> so anyway, sorry I was cockeyed for a while. And um, like I said... Merry Christmas in July, and stay crafty, my friends. I'm looking, trying to figure out where the button went to turn off. <laughs> now that I'm not sideways. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in today. <laughs>